let's pick up the story where we left off. We now know that the protosolar nebula has four basic types of material. And those materials can exist in solid form and gaseous form at different locations. There's differences there. There's differentiation. So there's what's known as the frost line or the snow line, and that's this white line here. And it just represents a certain distance from the protostar itself. Obviously, as we get close, we're really hot, and as we go further out, we cool off. Well, inside the snow line or the frost line, it's very hot. And the only th the things that can exist there are the materials that condense out at high temperatures, and that would be the metals and the rocks, the minerals. So you have those things condensing. The hydrogen compounds are gaseous all through here. They don't precipitate out. It's too warm. And so once you cross the frost line, still the metals and the minerals, the rock, can exist in solid form. But only after this frost line is it cool enough for the volatiles to condense out as well. So that's a line of demarcation that will have signif significant influence on subsequent developments. 98% of this nebula is hydrogen and helium to begin with, and that's staying in gaseous form. It doesn't condense out anywhere. So inside the line, inside the frost line or the snow line, the water, the carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, these are volatiles, these are hydrogen containing materials that will vaporize at the temperatures that exist inside the, the line. They can only exist in their molecular form like this outside of the frost line. Well, in their relatively solid form, I might, might say. The gases that are inside the frost line, they get blown out and so, in addition to the hydrogen and helium, it's the, the methane, the ammonia, and the water and carbon dioxide gas all get blown out to over the frost line. And so, basically, what's happening is because of all those gases and their relative proximity to the quite intense radiation and solar wind pressure from the protostar, they get blown out to over the frost line. And so within about 100,000 years or so, the gases have been, have been depleted inside the frost line. And then beyond the frost line, okay, those, those volatiles, they got blasted out of here, but once they cross the snow line, they condense out, they precipitate out again. So they're in a different form, little icy particles. So let's continue the story. We know that the gas and dust orbiting the protosun forms into a disk. So there's the disk, and it starts to differentiate. Why does it differentiate? Because the heat from this protosun pushes the gases out over the snow line, and then they precipitate out into this outer disk. And that outer disk has ice and dust all intermingled. The gas has been pushed out of the inner disk. So about within a million years or so, we have that inner region. The inner region has the metal, the rock, and dust. The outer region consists of uh, grains they have that are the volatiles in solid form in part, and the metals and the rock. Well, what happens is those, those particles of dust, those little grains, they start colliding into each other and they start coalescing together, getting a little bit larger. Then they, they're plowing through the gas, and the gas produces friction, which causes them to slow down, and they start spiraling in. And as they spiral in, they're interacting with other ones. They're smashing into other grains, and the grains just get larger and larger and larger. And there's an accelerated growth process that takes place here. Pretty soon, those grains have grown into boulder size and then even kilometer size objects, which are now called planetesimals, and ultimately they form planetesimals the size of our moon, which are 
the significant raw materials that produce the planets that are going to emerge from this outer disk. Keep in mind that our discussion of planetary formation is tentative, it's subject to modification, so we don't know in detail everything that's going on here. And But our confidence is growing, but it will almost certainly be modified, this whole process, modified and details added in as we learn more and more. Well, the planetesimals that are in orbit in the debris ring are non-circular, they merge together. Some of these are moon size, as we just discussed. Eventually, a 10 plus Earth mass body forms, one or two astronomical units from the snow line. So, out from the snow line, a couple astronomical units, we have this excessively large planetesimal forming. And it's big enough now that it's through the influence of its gravity. It's made of rock and metal. It starts pulling in gas just from sheer gravitational tug. After a few thousand years, that's the object that becomes Jupiter, the massive planet. So it first is, is the first object that has the ability to literally clear the dust and gas in its orbit so it produces a cleared out path. That's really important. It's got enough mass now that it stops migrating in and its gravitational tug on this gas either pulls it into itself or gravitationally slings it outward or inward toward the inner solar system. Ultimately the growth of this massive body stops at about 318 Earth masses and that's the size of Jupiter now consists of a several earth mass rocky core and then water ring around that and mostly the vast majority of the Jovian planet Jupiter is a really thick layer of hydrogen and helium. That's what it mostly consists of. So just a little visualization of planet formation here from what we've discussed. We have the protosolar disk and the inner and outer planets forming from planetesimals accreting together. So we see that in the inside and the outside here. Certainly this is not the scale, but beyond the snow line we have Jupiter forming here. And it looks like it's, you know, if you magnify this, it looks similar to the protosolar nebula where we have the dust and gas orbiting around it and planetesimals accreting together. And that's actually what happens to form the large Jovian moons. The really large moons form in the same way. Whereas gravitationally, the smaller moons are planetesimals in this region that are captured by the gravity of Jupiter as opposed to accreting in place as they orbit around. So just little different ways in which the moons are formed. And that probably helps you visualize that just a little better. So what about the formation of the outer and inner planets? Well, one key feature is that the outer planets in general didn't form where we currently find them existing today. And the basic reason is because of the complex interplay of the planetesimals spiraling in through the outer debris disk and the interactions taking place gravitationally and through friction causes a dance of the planets, so to speak. Within a few million years, Saturn forms a few astronomical units further out than Jupiter. So here it is, certainly not to scale. But Jupiter had already used up so much of the heavy elements, the metals and the minerals. There just isn't as much material for Saturn to form. It actually is pretty big, but not near as big as Jupiter. Maybe a third creates about 95 Earth masses, but far less proportion of the metals and minerals. Later on, Saturn's going to migrate out, and that's also true for the, for the other planets that we discuss. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn are significant in their collective effect on san, sen, sending planetesimals either outward or inward. And the ones that were sent out are the raw materials for Neptune and Uranus. In fact, because of this interplay between Saturn and Jupiter, there is a lot of activity going around near Saturn. So the assumption at this point is that Neptune actually formed closer to Saturn than Uranus. So Neptune had a 
smaller orbit than Uranus. It's the opposite now. Now there's lots of ice, but not much gas at this point. The gas has been used up by Saturn and Jupiter. They've already commandeered all of it, most of it. But the, the volatiles, the icy particles, that's what most of the material is made out of. Therefore, Saturn, not Saturn, but Neptune and Uranus are considered ice giants. And the planetesimals that were sent inward from Jupiter and Saturn, they go right through the snow line and form, through accretion, the rocky planets. Now, keep in mind that in this region, there's no hydrogen and helium. It's been blasted out by the sun. And that's consistent with the fact that the terrestrial planets don't have any hydrogen or helium. Even if they did, it would subsequently be removed because of the insufficient gravity to hold it in place. And water is probably mostly accounted for from the fact that these icy planetesimals coming in through the snow line had water that they carried with them. And so the terrestrial planets formed with that water resource to begin with. Moreover, the moon had a special formation process by being the product of a very large body coming in and smacking into Earth, so I'll discuss that in a little bit as well. So how the terrestrial planets formed in detail again is sketchy, but some of the planetesimals coming in from the outer debris disk, crossing through the snow line, coming in crisscross patterns, there were, were probably planetesimals already in that region, inside the frost line. So there are some mergers. These bodies tend to not be super huge, maybe as much as a tenth the mass of the Earth. And actually, that's quite big. But a few of these kind of collisions can produce incredible effects. And they're going to coalesce or shatter each other. And only the largest ones, as they collide, end up surviving. Many of them are destroyed, the smaller particles accreting onto the larger ones, so that through a process of time, and this is actually the res actual results of a computer simulation, starting with several hundred objects, progressively reducing down to the four planets that we see now in our solar system with stable orbits, of various sizes. So something along these lines is most likely what formed the inner planets. So what do we have at this point? Well we have a complex interacting solar system with the gas giants and the ice giants strongly gravitationally interacting with each other and with the planetesimals and ultimately resulting in a solar system that looks very much like ours now. In fact, it looks exactly like ours now. <laughs> of course, it's been evolving as time goes on. So the current positions are considered to be very different than they originally were. And a way we can kind of finish up the understanding of this is to recognize that Saturn, as is migrating out, eventually, and we know this for sure because it's doing it right now, obtained a 1-2 resonance with Jupiter, which simply means that for every two orbits of Jupiter, Saturn orbits once, according to Keplerian and Newtonian dynamics. We understand that in that situation, there's a with that kind of resonance, it's self-perpetuating, tends to stabilize itself, and has significant effects in amplifying itself and stabilizing itself, but also causing significant effects on objects close to it. So this resonance had the effect of tugging on Neptune and Uranus and causing them to migrate further out. Well, because Neptune formed closer than Uranus, Neptune gets flung out beyond Uranus. So it ends up further out, considerably further out, because of that larger gravitational tug. And the remaining planetesimals that are in the region here. So you can imagine the, there's still planetesimals in the region of Saturn and they are getting flung in and out. A lot of them get flung out actually beyond 30 astronomical units, which is the, f the, the foundation of the Kuiper Belt, as it's known. And even further out than that, forming the most distant structure of 
planetesimals, comets, and various debris that we know we know as the Oort cloud, which is very, very large indeed. So that's the current understanding of our solar system in brief. And this has resulted, once again, in our current system of planets, where we now can understand that between somewhere between Mars and Jupiter, we have this snow line. Or inside that snow line, you can only have rocky planets forming. Outside the snow line, you have the gas giants and the ice giants. And that's our current solar system. And now in the last part, let's discuss a little bit about the remaining debris that's left over. That's not the planets. That is significantly in the outer parts of the solar system.